people that was only trading with MFF. I, I didn't want to diversify. I was just trying to like stack funding with this one firm. Same. But yeah, a lot of people did that because we. I thought they were one of the most trustworthy firms besides FTML. Futures just seems more so the way of the future. And, and mind you, we've also changed the Did way- Did you just say futures is the future? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I came into this with the impression that I was gonna come in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure it the F out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill it, I'm gonna make a shit ton of money doing this, I'm gonna replace my job, and I'm just gonna be able to you know, live off three hours a day of just trading and like goof off the rest of the day. That was the psychology that I had. Then I quickly got kicked in the nuts and you know, found out that it's not gonna happen that quick. Just be patient, slow and steady, just get paid. Like, get paid. Get a thousand dollar payout. Next time, maybe get twelve hundred. Yeah. Get fifteen hundred. Like, the the more you try to rush the process, the longer it takes. You prefer futures over CFDs? Which one's a better market? Like for us as the retail trader. What up, traders? Still in New York City. I've got a good one for you. This is basically part two to last week's episode. I'm sitting down with the same guys, two of our Black Shirt Club members, and my co-host Evan Dyer. But this episode is all about getting funded. We're talking about futures versus CFDs. Top step, top one, all the different types of firms that all basically have the same names. We're gonna give you guys everything you need to know, especially if you're in the US and you wanna switch and start trading futures. That's what we're gonna talk about in this episode. We appreciate you guys tuning in. I really love doing these in-person podcasts. So please, if you enjoy it, comment, share, subscribe. The more attention we get on the channel, the more traveling events and I get to do to make these podcasts happen. And I've got a lot of big guests that I wanna go meet with by the end of this year. So your attention is what makes that happen. So check out the sponsor links down in the description. Again, make sure you're subscribed. I don't want you to miss any of the future episodes. Let's get into it. The sponsor of today's video is me. ASFX TV. With ASFX TV, if you don't know what it is, you can trade live with me and our team of funded full-time traders all week long. We offer live sessions in the New York session and live sessions in the London session. All of the videos are recorded and stored on our platform so you can rewatch them in case you can't be there live. But if you can be there live, we have a new live chat feature which allows you to send in questions, ask me what I'm thinking, give me a markup so I can give you feedback, basically anything in between. So again, if you're looking to get funded, if you're looking to take your trading to the next level, you've got to take in new information. The best way to do that is through ASFX TV. We have four funded full-time traders holding your hand through the live market every day. So click the link down below, check out the free trial, and I'll see you on the next stream. All right, traders, welcome back. We have a very special part two with the boys. The ice has been broken. We've talked about the technical side. We've talked about trade management. We even looked at some of the Black Shirt Club members' stats and put them on really blast. Roast anybody. No. Put them on blast. That's a better way to describe it. So today we're talking about CFDs versus futures and how you should get funded in 2024 going forward. I don't want it to be too uh, broad. I want to stay really niched on the differences between CFDs and futures. Zach, you've already been paid out from a top step account a couple of times. We are now kind of transitioning along with many people watching this from CFDs to futures. So I think what we can do is kind of like clear the air and provide some clarity on all of this. So let's begin. Oh, wait, before we start the podcast, let's just get James on here. Hey, we're, we're doing a podcast. You're in the intro. Say hi to everybody on the podcast. Uh, what's up, guys? How are you? I'll call you later, bro. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. I'm just taking a shit. <laughs> That's staying in the podcast, bro. Just taking a shit? You said I'm taking a shit. That's <laughs> staying in the that podcast. In, bro. Yeah. All right, so let's get into it. That was great. Great timing, James. <laughs> Impeccable, bro. So right now, we've had the metaphorical shit, not James's shit, the metaphorical shit hitting the fan when it comes to prop firms in the United States. So Zach, first tell us, how long have you been trading futures? And did you make this switch because of all the drama, or did you make the switch before? Yeah, so I, I did make it because of all the drama. I started trading futures back in September of 2023, basically right around the time that my Forex funds went down. I was one of those people that was only trading with MFF. I, I didn't want to diversify. I was just trying to like stack funding with this one firm. But yeah, a lot of people did that because I thought they were one of the most trustworthy firms besides FTMO. Yeah. I mean, it made sense. But yeah, after that happened, I don't know. I feel like I saw the writing on the wall because the United States is just crazy with regulation. You know, us U.S. traders, we, we have a lot of hurdles that we got to jump through. And futures just, 
it just because it's regulated, it's more friendly to U.S. traders. The United States wants U.S. people to trade futures. How would you describe the difference between futures and CFDs? The firms are like the markets themselves. The markets themselves. Markets themselves. Well, you know, it, it, you can trade FX. I personally don't don't trade the FX futures contracts, but you can trade virtually anything that you can trade with a CFD firm. You can trade on the futures. The futures is what the CFD is pretending to be. That's Not, literally what Boris just said earlier today. Yeah, like the futures is what the CFD is pulling its you know data from. So how about the firms? Compare the firms. So the firms are different and. It was, this was a, a big concern for me because it's just, you have to approach these things differently than CFD firms. Wow. You know, uh, CFD firms, two steps, 8% target, 10% drawdown, 5% max drawdown. Everyone knows those rules. With futures firms, it, it's just, uh, it's a little different. So you're going to be given, I don't even want to talk about them in percentages because it doesn't make sense to say you're given 3% drawdown on a 150K account. My opinion, I would say, Throw out the 150K. Don't even think about that number. You're given $4,500 of drawdown. That's your account, and you need to treat it more like a personal account. You know, it's not about trying to like stack a million in funding. It, I mean, it is. You still want to do that, but you have to treat it like a personal account that you actually want to grow, not just, you know, try and get a few good trades and then wait for payout and then maybe blow the account. Like you want to hold these accounts. It's which for me, it, this was a struggle for me at first. I thought this was going to be an issue and it turned out it made me a much better trader. It Why do you me. think that is? Because this trailing drawdown really forces you to respect your profits in a way that's different with the CFD firms. Like it's just, it feels more real. And I know that once I make that money, I make that buffer. That is my money. I'm entitled to withdraw that after, you know, all the firms are a little different, but most it's like 60 days. I can close the whole account out. I can withdraw it. I can do whatever I want with it. I can build the buffer. It, it really forces you to like respect it more, which is, it's kind of like, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to say this in a bad way about CFD firms, but it's kind of like more real realistic trading. Like if you have a personal trading account you're not just, unless you have a million dollars, you're not just like never trying to grow that account. You're, you're trying to grow it slowly, pay yourself as you go, but continually grow. Would you say it's built for you, the trader to succeed more than a CFD is, how they put that 8% in there, 5%, there used to be the timers, like it wasn't necessarily trader friendly, and they knew that, where with the futures, they kind of wanted to treat it more professional. They want you to take the right approach and almost succeed. I, I, I think so to a degree. I mean, they're still making money off failed challenges. Yep. They're, they're still doing that. But futures firms do actually a book live traders. Mm -hmm. Because the way it works with Top Step is you pass the combine, you move into XFA, you can get paid out when you're trading XFA, correct? Correct. And then if they like the way that you're trading, they'll look at the XFA accounts and they'll move you to a live account, basically. Exactly. But you you don't ever have to get moved to a live account. No, you'll still get payouts. You'll still get payouts. You've gotten payouts from the XFA. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. What's your take on this, Andy? Watching from the outside, as you kind of, I mean, it's perfect timing that we're filming this. You're coming off a week of vacation. This is literally day to day, this is changing. Firms are adjusting their rules. There's things up in the air that are being discussed. No one has clarity. So where do you see this? Well, that's just it. It's like, when I first came into it, it was like CFD, 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 like past funding challenges. So I have now like just poured a bunch of money into that trying to pass all those, not really understanding that, you know, regulations were going to come in and change it all. So I feel very slighted and, and misinformed, well, not misinformed, but just ill-informed, uh, you know, on my own, of my own account um, for doing all that instead of, you know, kind of maybe taking a more uh, metered approach to it. And uh, I'm, I'm ready to move forward with futures because I just see that because of our position in the States, like I just see that seems like a more sound base to work off of. And I agree with you for some, for some reason, and I don't know if it's because I'm not trading on meta, I'm just, I'm, I'm analyzing charts and trading from one specific chart, as opposed to, you know, analyzing on trading view and then jumping to meta. Um, I feel like I can, I can see things a little bit more clearly. I can, I feel like my management style is a little bit different now that everything's like all in one spot. Mm -hmm. So like having that flexibility with, with the, tr you know, using top step for that, uh, futures just seems more so the way of the future. And, and mind you, we've also changed the Did way. Did you just say futures is the future? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what is, I want to 
let's stay on the rules for a second, then I'll ask my other question. The consistency rule, since you talked about the drawdown. The fact that you cannot buy this challenge, which is relatively cheap, whether it's Apex or Top Step, I'll put a link in the description for Top Step since I'm talking to them. I don't know the guys at Apex, but I think because it's so cheap, there's gonna be people that try to pass this thing relatively quickly like they did yeah. with the CFD therms. But oh. they kind of have this rule in your way now with this consistency rule where it takes you a day or two because you can't make all of it. You explained this to me really well. You're saying if I was, let's say the profit target on the 150K is $9,000, which it is. If I was to make $5,000 in a day on that account, they actually bump the target. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, on the combines. Which is pretty interesting. So what do you think that does for the trader? Why do you think they have that rule in place? Tracking your trades has never been more important, and it's also never been easier with Tradezilla. Shout out to Umar and their team for being a sponsor of today's video. We love the product. I use it in the Black Shirt Club every day in the mentor mode. I use the back testing and playbook section as well. I use it for my own trading. It helps me make improvements. It's the cute little calendar that everybody likes to see when I post my PL. If you want to start using Tradezilla, Use the link in the description. Use the discount code down below. Save 10% on either your monthly or your yearly membership. Start tracking your trades today. It's going to help you make more money. It's going to help you know where you need to make improvements. Even if it's something as small as, hey, I'm losing a lot of money on Tuesdays. Let's figure out why am I losing money on Tuesdays. Let's figure out what time of day, what instrument, what asset. All of that and more can be found in Tradezilla. So if you're not a big tracking journaling guy, just let Tradezilla automate and do it all for you. Plus, you save some money when you use the link and the discount code down below. So thanks again to Tradezilla. Let's get back to the video. You know, I, I guess the rule is in place just so people don't punt the account and try and pass it in one shot. I mean, the people at Top Step or any of these firms would say they want you to, they want to get real data and pra get traders that are actually practicing real misc risk management. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they want to make it harder. It, to me, it's just that's the rule. And it's very easy to follow. I mean, having a passive challenge in two days instead of one, it's really not that big of a deal. If you want to punt the account, you still can. You just got to do it in two days. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's true. What were you going to say? Yeah, I think it's like built to, so they can see a like, consistency and not just, okay, they take one trade, run at 6R with heavy risk that, okay, let's give him the account, and then he loses it. Like, it's the same thing of like, if you actually can trade, then you should have no problem trading a second day and then passing it then. Like, why do you have to do it in one day? Where like it sounds appetizing of like okay one trade I could be done, but like just that's not realistic in terms of you're not going to swing that risk management once you get the account most likely. So why do it now? It's just creating a bad habit. I think it was you, me, and Tom that had a, a pretty lengthy conversation about how to approach the challenges that I had left, the CFD accounts that I had still going. Where you know like what's stopping me from putting two percent on a trade and trying to pull out a drawdown or you know cash out that account within, you know, a couple of days versus trying to methodically be, you know, consistent, like 1%, 1%, 1% over like weeks or a couple of days. And, you know, we were, we were kind of tossing it around and, and, and Tom, Tom just looks at it flat out. Like, if you're going to do that, you're just gambling. Like, like there's no if, ends or buts about it. Like you're not a trader, you're just gambling and you have no, you know, no base of skills to, to work off of. Sorry if that offends you, but you now that's where I, I also kind of like what, the rules that top step has where it forces you to be a good trader if for it doesn't give you the opportunity to just like you said just punt it and try and pass it and just start making money and then if you blow it who cares and top step also does a really good job of making it affordable and easy to break into and you know takes away some of that stress that you might have over failing initially because you know, if you fail it's just it's another you know, 100, 150 bucks to get right back in there and tackle it again and try again and, and just, you know, try to change up what you're doing and be successful. I think the consistency... Long term. Yeah, I agree. Sorry. No, no, you're good. I think the consistency rule, and I agree with your, t your perspective on it. I do think, like you said, it, in a way, it makes it seem harder, but at the end of the day, it attracts a more professional trader. So here's the next question. How much do you think you need to make per day to live off of your trading, which is what everybody wants to do, which I'm not a big fan of. And of course, for our listeners who are international, this is different, right? Like if you're in the Dominican, shout out to my Dominican brothers. When I was in Miami, bro, they thought I was Dominican. I'm not even that dark this year. <laughs> and if you're in the Dominican, I think you could probably live off much less than what it cost me to live yeah. my life in St. Pete. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the reason I'm asking this, and then we'll stay on this question. The reason I'm asking is though, like, does Top Step at their 150K combine 
give you the opportunity to make enough money to live off of your trading? Uh, I would say, yeah, to start with, right? Are you saying like forever is that where you're going to be stuck at? Then maybe not. But I would say it definitely gives you like a foundation that you could probably dive into it full time because you could easily pull four grand out of it. Now, is that enough to solely live off of if you don't have anything else coming in anymore? Maybe not, depending again where you live, probably for the Northeast where I am, no. And kind of even you still in the States, it's realistically not enough. Uh, I would say you definitely could have like a 5K month, 6K month on 150K. Now, why would you stay that way? If you could bump it up to 300, 450, if you get three of the top step accounts, then you could definitely solely live off that. What do you think? Since you're the only one in the, in the group here that's gotten a payout so far. Yeah, I, I think, um, I, I, I guess you could live off it technically, but it's just, I don't even want to look at it like that. It's just an opportunity to get $4,500. This is what I look at it as. If I pass the challenge, it's an opportunity to get a $4,500 trading account and then manage that appropriately to build a buffer and eventually take payouts from. So if you're looking at it that way, of I'm, I'm working with $4,500. That's what it is. It's what know? it is. I, I do agree with that perspective, yeah. like I said. How much are you willing to lose in a single day? on that account. Cause so, like what Andrew said, you could just buy this thing again, very cheap. Yep. The first reset is 50% off. And then you're, and even like they run crazy promos. So you can always get another account. Yeah. So how much of that do you typically think you should be risking in order to get to this point of like, Hey, I am, I mean, you have had over 10 grand, 10 grand in payouts already. So it's mm -hmm. like to get to that point, you can do it off just one account. You definitely can. Yeah. Are you, um, are we talking funded accounts? Yeah. Like how much yeah. to risk? What, what I risk personally, when I first start the account, it's about building the buffer. So you gotta be a little safer. I don't trade more than one contract max. Got it. I risk- On a mini. Oh uh, yeah, on a mini contract, I'll risk like 150 to $300 max. Keep I don't, tight. yeah, don't go above that. Give myself enough room to have some losses and then get the $4,500 buffer, continue like that. And then as you build the account up, just like you would a personal account, you will, you will size up. Yeah. Just, just like personal account trading. Would you say that 150 risk is because you're willing to take a small cut, small cut, and then when it wins, you could make a thousand out of it? Yeah, Whereas definitely. Me, I'm going one to one, I'm risking 150. I'm not really looking to make 150 out of it, so I would risk heavier, but for someone with the lower win rate, higher risk reward, yeah, you don't need to size all Yeah, it's all strategy dependent yep. for sure. What do you think? Oh, I'm probably gonna go down too much of a this, you know, philosophical, psychological no, hole should. here. That's why we're here. But it's- Preach, Socrates, preach. So stand on the table. Um, I think a lot of us and myself included come into this with the glitz and glamour of that. Maybe, you know, maybe you're not thinking I Lambo. I always knew you were into glitter. I love glitter. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I love won't distract glitter. you. The audience um, hates it when I interrupt. Yeah. No, I love it. I, Cause I want it. <laughs> I deal with this on a daily basis. Right. I mean, this, this is, this, this is, is what it is. is to be in the BSC, right? Yeah. So, but it's Take um, us down the rabbit hole. You know, you come, into, you come into this and you see the opportunity to make a lot of money. So the, like I came in with the idea that I'm just gonna get a million dollar funding, like, like funding account. Like I'll just buy five accounts that max out to a million and I'll pass them all at the same time because we have trade copiers. And you know, once I'm funded, I just like 1% a week is 10 grand a week, is 40 grand a month. That's, you know, uh, $480,000 a year. Like the math just was like real it quick. Makes so like, much sense. It makes so it's much sense. so easy. Just and it's like, button. it's just 1%. You just need to make 1%. Well, this, the fact of the matter is that that really fucked with me, uh, excuse my French, uh, psychologically, because I was seeing such big numbers. Like when I made money, I saw big, mo you know, big numbers coming in, which was cool. But when I lost money, I saw big numbers going out. And that definitely, I think, you know, even if I didn't want to admit it on the forefront, uh, my subconscious, it was messing with me. So do these 150K accounts, can they make payouts? I think, I think everybody needs to, uh, everybody has to spend a lot of time working on understanding what they need to survive off of, build that base first. So like for me, like I, I'm, I'm taking all sorts of hits and, and dialing everything back. It's like, I just wanna pass one account. I just wanna get funded on one account, however long it takes, just trade well and get funded. And 150K, account or a 100k account 50k account if you trade well enough you can you can make enough money to live off that easily and then after you build that base you want to continue to, to grow from there then find you know find another account buy another account attack on you can tack on three if you're making one percent off 450k because top step will let you have three accounts you can copy to them you're you're one percent a week is 4500 a week that's 
uh, 16 grand a month. That's good living. I don't care who you are, where you are in the world, that's good living. All right, you should be able to make a living off that kind of money. And 1% a week of 450K is not that hard. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. Not every week, because you're gonna have down periods. You're gonna have down periods. And you need income, or you need cash reserves, or other right. streams, whatever you wanna call it, for those down periods. I but mean, we're getting more into the money yes. management yeah, side yeah, of things, and, and, and being able to manage your own personal finances. Sure. But uh, that's, that's a big part of it, because I think the psychology of money in that regard makes it, can make it difficult to trade. I know it has for me because just the need, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in debt right now. Like I, my, my main profession has made me a lot of money uh, over the, the last decade. And it's a very fruitful job that I have on the side from trading. But as soon as the economy shifted, and you know, I'm, I'm in the real estate side of things. So as soon as the economy shifted, they started jacking up rates. I lost 70% of my business. It's crazy. I'm, I'm, offer, I'm operating on 30% of the income that I had going for like the past three or four years, which like, look, you know, my lifestyle changed over that time. You know, I had two kids, we moved. I'm trying to manage, you know, a house full of four. Like it's, it got expensive and I got used to a lifestyle that got taken away from me. So yeah, I, I came into this with the impression that I was going to come in. I'm going to, I'm going to figure it the F out. I'm going to, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to make a shit ton of money doing this. I'm going to replace my job and I'm just going to be able to you know, live off three hours a day of just trading and like goof off the rest of the day. That was the psychology that I had. Then I quickly got kicked in the nuts and, you know, found out that it's not going to happen that quickly. So now that I've gone through all that over the past eight months and we're looking at top step, you know, 150 K account, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I wouldn't even mind going to a 50 K account. I just want to pass. I want to feel like you golf. Do you golf? No, no, then get the fuck out. <laughs> we golf. So yeah, we, we know we golf. <laughs> uh, skate, bro. Come on. <laughs> so, all right. So you skateboard. I used to skateboard. You land that 360 flip off, off uh, three steps, right? You clear the gap. It takes you hundreds of tries to do it. But the second you do it once, you can do it again, 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 again. Yeah. Build the confidence. Because, right. You build the confidence. No different golf. You break 80 once, all of a sudden breaking 80 is like, it's just no problem. For me right now. Bro, don't bring me into this. He doesn't know what it's like. Well, I'm oh, sorry. Break 100, 95. Relax. Someday. It'll yeah, happen. It'll happen. It takes practice. Again, it takes practice. like trading. Yeah. You, just, you just got to work at it all the time. Uh, but, but I don't have unrealistic expectations of my golf. Yep. I have not been kicked in the nuts by my golf. I go out and I have fun. I may have developed a slight drinking problem because of my golf, but that's not a kick in the nuts. That, ha that is definitely a side effect of golfing. But... My expectations were different with golf than yours were with trading, which is why I avoid the psychological hurdles of now beating myself up and hating golf. I still like golf. You know what I mean? And I think you've come around now to seeing the expectations are the root of the frustration. It's not the trading. No, it's the expectation that you thought it, trading was going to be easy. Yeah. Yeah. And just the time frame of it. I think everyone's got a skewed or obviously we all want it faster than it probably does for everybody. But I would say I mean, like all the people I work with in the BSC now, most of them have like realistic realistic expectations now but like truthfully like in the beginning they did not and i have to quickly address it of like that's just not realistic that's not going to be you can't do that consistently at like one percent a week one and a half percent a week it's like what is enough like long-term focus learn how to make one percent a month and then do that over the long term we'll get that up to two percent plus you get more capital over the long term now that's enough but you want the enough today this week this month it's so hard uh, for me personally, it's so hard to convince myself to remove P and L and the amount of money that's being made on you know the wins on a weekly basis, daily basis, whatever it is, from the equation, and just put together some consecutive winning days, no matter how big or small that they are, just just to get through some of that because it's like, all right, like I just made 0.1 percent, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I made 0.3 percent this week, but I still need like another six percent to pass a funding challenge. Like it's going to take forever, man. Like you, like I get down on that that aspect. And when I came to the BSC, it was like I, I had the first trade I took was like I put two percent. Like it was a demo account, but I put two percent on it and made like like 2.5 R on that. So it was like this four percent week. I was like, this is fucking easy. This is going to be a <laughs> I did a cakewalk and uh, quickly found out that just you know, wasn't going to be the case no matter how, but no matter how many times you or Austin or, or Tom or James would tell me like it's just not like it's not going to happen that fast. I, I just didn't want to listen.
I just had to figure it out for myself. So you're describing like so accurately what we all have gone through. Exactly. In that first and, year. And, and yeah, every like you said, everybody's just going to have that wall up where like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Not me. I'm going to be some I'm prodigy. Different. Yeah. I'm right. different. No. You don't know me. No. You don't know me. <laughs> you don't know me, son. <laughs> Literally. But we do. We're all the same. Yeah. And that's what's been clear on the coaching side, too, is like a lot of our tr people that come through the Black Shirt Club suffer from the same types of yeah. issues, which is actually helping us, I think, coach traders faster. Yeah. It's like, like oh. again, if you compared you, bro, to anyone that's been trading as long as you, you are miles ahead of them, undoubtedly. I appreciate you saying that. But you got to be careful because my head will get big and, that, and then. <laughs> And then I'll do 2% risk again. <laughs> right, well, my own personal capital. <laughs> they said I could. They said I could. They said I'm the best. <laughs> I'm, I'm so the good. best eighth month trader that you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, With so, a down draw, 100K down draw. Down I want to ask you, Zach, now being someone that's come full circle, like you said in the previous episode, we we're in the Black Shirt Club, traded ASFX systems, left the Black Shirt Club, mixed and went into ICT and now kind of use that as the framework. Do you feel like realistic expectations going into this future stuff what do they look like like what is the realistic expectation of a payout from a, a futures trader yeah realistic expectations are so important and it wasn't until i started having that that i saw any success at all like when, my first few payouts i was like if i could just get a 500 hundred dollar payout i'll be over the moon like that that's how i felt yeah. and that's when i finally started getting payouts right. so it's the same thing with futures um you know just just be patient, slow and steady. Just get paid, like get a thousand dollar payout. Next time, maybe get 1200, get 1500. Like the, the more you try to rush the process, the longer it takes. Yeah. You have to just like sit there with how long this is going to take and just submit to time and it will come. You, you, you now you saw Mark in the Black Shirt Club past his combine. Mark's already been paid out from the CFD firms. And I asked him, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Do you prefer futures over CFDs? Which one's a better market, like for us as the retail trader? You know, man, I prefer futures now. I, I really do. Um, first off, the way I approach the futures challenges to me, and I think this is personal preference, but for me, it's easier because it is one step. It is trailing. You know, I'm at the point where I don't need to spend two months on a challenge. Like, and I'm not saying that in a cocky way, no, but, but it's, we all were laughing at that because it's like once they removed the time limit on the CFDs, everybody was like, oh, I'll just take my time. <laughs> I'll stay in this challenge when I've already lost all the money that I actually can lose because I bought it. So it's stupid to take a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, if you're new, like I think spending a lot of time on challenges is you're, you're basically in your education phase yeah. and, and a challenge is helping you not lose your money in the real sure, markets. Okay. But once you, you're getting payouts, like I don't need to spend two months and I see it as wasted time. Yeah. Like I do want to get these accounts passed quick and because the future challenges are cheaper, I'm more comfortable with being like, okay, throw 150 bucks on, I'll try and pass in a few trades. And if I don't, fine. If I do, it's a business expense. Well, think about how many times, especially like someone like you, and this is what I was looking at with my CFD payouts last year. I'm like, okay, if I know I'm gonna make 100 grand in payouts, how many challenges can I buy and fail to get to that 100K? Like, what's that expectancy? Just like we study our stats in our trading, we probably could break down the stats of buying and failing and passing funding challenges and getting paid out, right? Absolutely. And at a lower price point for entry, yeah. what's the drawdown on a 100K account on a CFD firm? 10%? 10, yeah, 10 so basically, like, if you get a 100K account, you have $10,000 of playroom. That's a $500 fee. You're saying we have, with 150K, it's 4,500? So you basically, would buy two and a half futures challenges to equal the same amount of play with drawdown, you know, wiggle room that you would with one CFD account. Exactly. And you do have the, the activation fee if you pass. Sure. But, but with futures, that's, I really prefer that because I can feel okay about failing it even more. I didn't even put the full cost in. Does it make it almost seem like the activation fee is like, that's how Top Step is making their money. Like they have to make money. They're going to make money on people buying and failing challenges, but that monthly fee, that is probably where they make a good percentage of their oh, yeah. reoccurring revenue that they can pretty much say every month we're gonna make about this much money if we have this many customers. For sure. And I think that's, when you look at it from a trader's perspective, I don't wanna be a part of some firm that I don't know how they're making money. That's weird. I wanna know how you're making money so I can see is it transparent or not, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's the pro to it. Yeah. And when you sit down and you think about some of the best traders in history, I think even not in history, just right now, Crudelli, I think about PAX, I think about Brian Shannon, 
even Brian probably doesn't fit this list. Linda Rashke, some of these people, they trade like one or two markets and they all trade futures. Brian trades stocks, but Crudelli futures, Pax futures, Linda futures, so many well-known futures traders. And I get it now. And I almost feel like the CFDs are like, and Boris and I kind of disagreed on this, I think, but I feel like the CFDs are kind of like, definitely not the scammy, but like the, the bootleg version, if you would call it that. Because all these different CFD firms, brokers, CFD brokers, have slightly different pricing on the same asset. So it's like, what's the actual price? Well, then you compare it to futures where all of it clears with the CME. Oh, well, that's the actual price. Yeah. No, it literally is the bootleg. Like, that's not even trying to be mean, but it is. It is. Yeah. Like, it's like the jailbroke version. Like, you used to jailbreak your iPhone and, like, get the hacks. That's what, like, CFDs kind of are. It's kind of sketchy. It might fuck up your phone and then Apple won't take it back, but it could give you some cool shit. You know what exactly. I mean? And that's where I think CFDs have found a hole. And I don't know if you want to get into this yet, but, like, there's so much to talk about with the no spread, no slippage with futures and yeah, how much money you can save. Explain that. So, you know, with, we all know with FX and, and CFD firms, you're going to get a spread. You know, you can get slipped. I mean, just go on Twitter. There's tons of stories of Slip people getting slipped, hell. slipped to hell. Exactly. With futures, this is just non-existent. Um, there's not different data feeds. Like yeah. the, there's, there's one data feed. Everyone gets the same price and you get filled on your exact price. There is no, there's minimal slippage sometimes in like really bad, bad scenarios, but virtually nothing. I mean, I get filled at my exact price. So when you're taking a span of a hundred trades or a thousand trades and you're not, you're just paying a commission, which are pretty low commissions and you're, you're having no slippage. You have no idea how much money you actually save. Right. It's a great point. On a span of a thousand trades. What, what were you thinking? Well, I was just going to say like I had five accounts across five different oh, so challenges. Oh, you saw the slippage all the time. Oh, I'd, I'd get out of a trade and I'd be like, well, that's interesting. So I made 400 on with this company, but I made a thousand with this company. So how, like they went the same, how did I miss out? Well, then you look out? at the exit price and you see. It's, and it's all jacked up, different. like across every single account. Like like four of them would be the so same and then that one would be. that's not just spread and slippage. That's also what I'm saying about if you're price. with Think Markets with one firm and 8Cap with another firm, you're never going to get the yeah, same trade. It's never, never going to happen. And that's unsustainable in my opinion. I agree. No, and that, that was actually what was really frustrating, uh, again, on the psychological front with trading all those different challenge accounts with a copier. It's like, all right, so that was like, on this account, it was a 1% trade. And I know it's a 1% trade because it went 1R with 1% risk when I entered it. But when I go and look at my account and like the P&L, it's all jacked up. It doesn't equal 1% of the total account because of, of fees and everything else. And, you know, you should be able to get around that because it, like, it shouldn't affect you that bad. But it still was like frustrating because like, you know what your account size is and what you're trading. So you feel like it should all just kind of be the same. So anyway. Yeah, but what I like about the futures is just like when you're talking with CFDs, like the with the calculator we use on MT5, it's like sometimes I'll have 18 lots on, sometimes it could be six. It really just depends on the stop loss. But with these futures, it's really between a range of like two to five contracts. Okay. I've yet to do the 15. I think you've been slinging it around. Grow but... some balls. <laughs> I don't think I have. Like... No, 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 it's big. I did it accidentally, and I, that's how I torched my first oh, combine. Yeah. Well, I don't believe, I don't, I'm not the kind of guy to buy a combine and trade practice. For 150 bucks, I just am not at that point. So I'm going to fail it and not care. And I think that's one thing we should talk about too, but you go first. Oh, no, I was going to say, when you said you only put one contract on each of these, I was like, oh, man, I've been slinging around like five <laughs> contracts. On it's the like, futures firm? Yeah. Like oh, my God. Bro, one contract, like the leverage is so strong in futures. Like one contract with a $4,500 drawdown is dangerous enough. Well, like on SPX, it was like, it was only like twelve fifty a tick. So I'm like, no, we can bump that up. Well, twelve fifty <laughs> is that the micro or the mini? Uh, it was the mini. That's the mini. That's the mini, yeah. yeah. So I think that's why with SPX, I'm typically, I think like on Friday, I threw three on the first trade eight on the second trade, five on the third trade, something like that. You know at what the mean? end of it all, I'm looking at the cash risk of that's what all, it is, where right. my stop loss is. Right. I'm, I'm not saying like, do I put three on no, this? No, no, no. I'm just still looking at cash, Right. Yeah. but Tighter just for the most part, it's like, oh, I have four contracts on, I'm gonna take two off. Yeah. It's not like oh, I have 18.6 lots on this. Okay, like take 75% off. What the hell is that math? I don't know. But with the futures, it just seems instant execution with it right there on trading view and trade of eight. That's another pro, trading yeah, like that. on trading view. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the trade copiers. There's so many pros. So let's just do this to wrap this conversation. Biggest pro and biggest con when trading futures. Since we've all done it already. You want to go first? Biggest pro, biggest con. Or, or maybe a piece of advice to the guys that are 
not switched over, other than of course to use my affiliate link, so Top Step knows I can drive them traffic. What other <laughs> tip would you give? Don't laugh, it's true, I need them to know. I don't know that I'd give a tip, but it's just like my, like pros are definitely cost. Yeah. For, per, like it just, it's really very easy to get into. Yeah. Um, con, uh, I, a con for me would be that you're limited on the amount of accounts that you can have with one company. So like that's, and that's kind of a but silly con. three accounts at Top Step at 150. That's good that's enough. I know, I know. But again, all your account, 45 contracts at five ticks of yeah. movement is $10,000 yeah. or so. Yeah. That's right. a lot. Well, and that was that's the other thing. Right, that is true. Like I was finding like I threw, uh, I put a practice trade on the other day and walked away from the desk, and came back, it was at five grand. I was right. like, oh, right. okay. So no, like it, it, it's possible. Paid. Yes. Yeah. Like it's, it's you can certainly get, feasible. You definitely get paid. But the uh, biggest pro to me is entry cost, I yeah. think. Good one. So. What do you think? Biggest pro, biggest con? I'd say biggest con at first is the trailing drawdown. Trying, if you're coming from CFD firms, get used to learning how to navigate that is yeah. probably the biggest con. Once you get used to it, I don't even think it's much of a con. No. But yeah. that, that would be my con. And pros, you know, Top Step specifically just has a really great community. Like they have Top Step TV. That, that thing is on. That's like my CNBC. Bro, they should have you on soon. I would love to be when on I get that. To, I'm, I'll get you on there. Dude, get me out. I would love to talk to those dudes. I, I listen to them daily. So... I think that's that's huge. That's a huge benefit because they're not just a firm that's trying to sell you challenges to fail. They sure. they provide education, they provide uh, entertainment, and they really actually help. And I think that's a benefit with the regulators. Yeah. Because they kind of position themselves as not just a prop firm but an educational platform. Sure. And giving people the opportunity to trade without spending too much money. And they've already had a really good relationship with the CME for a long time. Top Step has been around for exactly. a long time. They're the OG prop firm. They are the OG, especially OG futures prop firm. Mm -hmm. How about you, Ev? Biggest pro, biggest con? I haven't really seen a con yet. I mean, it's still pretty new for me, but pro would definitely be just the instant execution. I'm getting my orders in at the price I want. I don't, I like not having to go to MT5, honestly, and use the calculator. It just seems quicker to do it on trading view. You see your trade right there. I even did it this past Friday. I saw that you have yours trade to ticks, not the money value. So if you don't want to get emotional yeah, yeah, over how much money you're up. But he also switches back and forth. He I just sends it. the mark above the ticks. I do it for the enter, for entertainment purposes. That's what it is. For yeah. entertainment purposes I switch to only. dollars. Right, right, right. When you need to flex on everybody yeah. real quick, just so you know. But I think 2,000 ticks, guys. Jeez. You do the math. <laughs> you do the math. The, the pro, though, is definitely not having to trade on MetaTrader anymore. Yeah. That, to me, is huge. I don't like MetaTrader. No. Nope. Everybody was freaking out about it, making posts. Raja Banks made a post about like deleting his app and everybody was tweeting about it. It's like, that's a good thing. Like yeah. change is good. Embrace the change. And I feel like Zach, you've done a great job at it. And it's just great timing to have you back in the Black Shirt Club at the time where you're crushing it with the futures and all of the rest of us have to switch over to the futures. Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to, to be able to help guide people. Yeah. yeah, I wish I found it in September when I know my forex funds went down. Well, just think about where we're all going to be in a year from now. Yeah. We're all going to be in a really good spot. I think we will have more. This is my theory. Final comment on the podcast here. I bet you in 2024, we have more Black Shirt Club members get paid out than 2023 because of futures. That's going to be my guess. So we'll, we'll revisit this next year and see where we're, if my bet comes true. It's not a guess. It's not a guess. We'll make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Listen, we appreciate you guys listening all the way through to part two. I really appreciate you guys making the journey. I know it was close for you, but you guys made a trip. So thank you. This has of been course, great. Of course, we'll probably do this again. I'll come to you. When I come to Philly, I'll come to oh, you. Good. I'm not coming to Jersey City. <laughs> you're coming here again. Yeah, we'll do it here. So for the <laughs> listeners, we appreciate you. Make sure you're subscribed. I'll put everybody's socials down below. Like I said, there's links for the future stuff down below. We'll probably be making more tutorials and stuff as well. So just make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of that stuff. But we appreciate you. Let us know what you think in the comments. And we'll see you guys in the next episode.